We're working on our skills as a dungeon master. This idea of building a DM toolkit. Things that we can utilize to, to not only build the narrative, tell the story, immerse the players, but uh, ultimately, from my perspective, find what I call our vision and our voice. Taking that creative personality, that spark that brought you to Dungeons & Dragons in the first place, unleashing that creativity on the table with your players to create a memorable moment. In this podcast, in this vlog, the toolkit we're going to look at is immersion. Two or three ways to bring your players into the game and not only challenge them, but build this story, build this creativity, and with every gaming session, create something memorable. The first part of immersion, there's this there's this window, there's this effect of when you sit down and play the game. You sit down, you unpack your dice, you get your books out, whether it's physical or digital. You're getting into character, you're talking to your friends, and as the adventure starts, the players, the players, they're starting to make that transition from Fritz the player, or whoever you are the player, to your character, to your avatar on the table. And that, that pull-in can be anywhere from five to ten minutes or a couple of minutes. Once we pull the players in to the narrative, to the story, to the adventure... When in doubt, get them to roll some dice. When you pull them into that, now you're creating. The focus is on the table. The focus is on the game. And that alone creates immense immersion. Now, the challenge is keeping that immersion, getting there, and making sure it doesn't break. In terms of getting there, what I like to do is, if there's any housekeeping or if there's any questions, I like to push those at the start of the game when we sit down. Every adventure is going to have a little um, a leadway, a segue in, whether that's, hey, here's what happened last time, or, hey, you found a mysterious map, or there's these ruins that you've discovered, right? There's always a starting point in every gaming session. Let's talk about character upgrades, or if anyone has any questions, or if there's any business from last time to accomplish this time, before we jump into the adventure proper. I try my best to separate pre-game questions and then maybe any starting questions before the actual start of the adventure. So now we're, we're in the adventure and as a DM, we want to build tension and I have to be careful be how I define this word um, tension simply because I mean it in a good way. Let's use the analogy of, of a dungeon being in a dungeon. It's Dungeons and Dragons, right? There'll be a dragon in that dungeon exploring the dungeon. This is a living ecosystem. This is a, a living world. There's probably three or four factions in there. There's some ruins. We have environmental effects, parts of the dungeon collapsing or maybe tunnels being propped up, various traps, um, maybe some sort of automaton roaming around. It's, it's literally a living world. So we want to convey that to the party. Often, as a DM, we focus on just like the immediate room. Where's the party on the map? I've got my DM screen up. I've got my little figure on the map marking where they are. Okay, there's a door to the north. If they move through that uh, 40 feet, there's another door, and then there'll be an encounter in there. What about the rest of the dungeon? Utilize environmental cues. And again, we're just using a dungeon as an example right now. There's other aspects, whether it's a city or wilderness. Use dungeon cues to make them understand there's other things going on, to keep them on their toes, to build that tension. Two examples. When they enter a room, you hear an alarm go off on the dis in the distance. Sounds like a ringing bell really far away echoing through the dungeon. doesn't have to do anything. It's not going to do anything. But now the party's aware that, hey, something went off. Maybe it's a trap they missed. Another example would be um, as you close a door into the dungeon... You hear some grinding noises a few corridors down or, or in the distance. It sounds like something just opened. Um, another great example, as players are exploring or moving, pick someone in the party and um, just ask them to make a random skill check. You know, uh, Fritz, make a, make a listen check. Okay, what'd you get? 16? Look down at your notes, your DM notes behind the screen. Maybe scribble something down. There's nothing there. No, okay, you're all right. Keep, keep moving. Nothing. You don't hear anything. Little things like that to, to, to pull the tension, to keep the players on their toes, on guard, ready at any moment 
something can happen. That's that's pulling them in, um, utilizing the dice in that way. Uh, the dice are there not just to, and, and I'm going to make a note, this is a separate vlog, how to utilize the dice, because this is important. Uh, as a DM, yes, we have miniatures or, or possibly miniatures in D&D. We've got maps. You might have props. You have a story. You have books. But the one thing that you also have that you're always going to use constantly, the set of dice. I mean, think about that. All the stuff that you utilize to run your D&D game, whatever that is. You could go high fantasy, low fantasy, old school, just pen and paper. You could go total dwarven forge and terrain sets and sound effects. Dice. You're going to be utilizing the dice. So as a DM, the number one thing in your toolkit to build tension is the dice. Knowing when to roll the dice, knowing how to utilize the DM screen. Sometimes you roll the dice in front of the DM screen for the players to see. Sometimes you roll it behind. Now, on a side note, if it affects the players, if it affects the players, then they need to see the dice. I want them to see the dice. If it doesn't affect the players, they don't need to see the dice. Fritz, give us an example to build tension. Um, I put my dice that I utilize as a DM to the right of my DM screen in front of it. So this way the players can see the dice. They get to see the dice. That's a tool. When I want to build tension, if the players are deciding what to do, right? You're standing at a door. Is the, is the barbarian going to go first? Is the fighter going to go first? Did the rogue check for enough traps? The wizard's in the back. You know, this, this normal back and forth. If I find that the party's taking too long to decide what to do, we're breaking immersion, right? We're breaking immersion. I'll pick up a D20. Make some motion of rolling it. Roll it behind the DM screen. Make a note. There's no note. There's nothing there. I'm just rolling the die. It could be a 5, a 1, a 20. Then I put the die back in the pool, the D20 back in the pool. Utilizing dice in that way. Why is Fritz rolling those dice? What's going on? Some players won't notice it. Some players will notice it. The, the key is utilizing the dice as props, not only just for rolling and generating random events and finding out who wins initiative in an encounter, but to, to bring the players into the adventure, to pull them into the immersion and to really help them realize, hey, this is a living game that's going on right now. You need to be on your toes. You need to be in character. You need to be on guard.